Boridaro. Pronouncer, every pony. This is Brony Dan. It's not original, but hey, you try coming up with reality these days. Well, since I've talked about what I consider are the worst aspects of Steven Universe, it only makes sense to follow it up with the best aspects. And that is not easy. If it's difficult to choose bad episodes of this show, it's even harder to choose the best episodes. Each episode means something to different people, so being able to satisfy everyone with this list is next to impossible. So if I leave out an episode that you like, or hell, there's an episode on this list that you don't like, don't be afraid to comment down below to explain which one and why. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at the top 10 best episodes of Steven Universe. I am the fury, I am the patience, I am the conversation, I am a... Number 10. On the run. Amethyst has always been portrayed as being more of the comic relief of the group. She always has the funniest quip. She doesn't take her role as Crystal Gem as seriously as Pearl or Garnet. But like with many great comics, there's a layer of tragedy behind the smiles. And in this case, it's Amethyst's origin. Steven and Amethyst go out on the run as Amethyst takes Steven to where she was created. A desolate wasteland known only as the Kindergarten. Where we discover that Amethyst was actually part of a gem world experiment to grow new gems on Earth. We won! Stop! And we shut this place down so the Stop. Earth would be safe from parasites like me! This is where we get our first glimpses of Amethyst weakness, which is her insecurities about where she stands in the group, and that she feels that Pearl isn't going to accept her as nothing more than a reminder of the horrible things Homeworld were going to do. I never asked for it to be this way. I never asked to be made. Amethyst. You could also say that this is where the relationship between Pearl and Amethyst gets stronger. Most of the show had them butting heads over everything, but the moment they stopped and talk it over is probably one of the best moments of the show. Amethyst may have felt like a mistake, but we all know she wasn't, and neither is this episode. Now let's go home so Steven can sleep in a bed. <laughs> Number 9. And stronger than you. The Test. Steven comes across the sea spire statue which he lost from all the way back at the beginning of the show. And once discovering that the mission was originally a test to see if he was ready to come out on missions, he asks the gems to give him another one to prove himself. What's cool about this episode are the visuals and designs of the test the gems put Steven. They feel like something you get out of a video game. Hell, Steven actually leaves the test and goes outside the boundaries. But really, the important thing from this episode is the importance of confidence. The Gems really want Steven to feel confident in himself, but then we learn that they need Steven to improve their confidence so that they could properly raise him. We're bad at this. What? Yeah, you can't control him, and he shouldn't be taking advice from me, and we don't have Rose to tell us what to do! But he needs us to show him how to be a Gem! Steven is not just a Gem. There has never been anything or anyone like Steven. We don't know what he needs. It's actually a good insight to parenting when you think about it. All I can say is I don't need a boost of confidence to watch this episode again. Number 8. Alone Together. This was something that a lot of fans had wanted to see for a while. Steven fusing. Though it wasn't how people expected. After getting fusion dance lessons, which he grasps faster than I did in my two years of college, Steven shows his moves off to Connie, which results in the two of them fusing together into Stavoni. Yep, the first gem-human fusion hybrid. We've heard about how fusion works, but this is the first time we see and experience it from the fuser's point of view. Also, we get more of an understanding in how fusion works. In the past, fusion just seemed to be a technique used for battles, but here, we learn that it's an entity formed by the strong emotions of the ones participating, which would be expanded upon later. 
In fact, you could interpret this whole concept into different things. Relationships, social anxieties, identities. This is probably one of the deepest episodes in the show's history, and it is certainly one of the best. You are not two people, and you are not one person. You are an experience. Make sure you're a good experience. Number seven, friendship. Kind of an odd choice for many people, but for me, this is one of the most relatable episodes out there. The final part of what I guess was the mid-season arc between Pearl and Garnet, as Pearl wants to finally catch Peridot so that Garnet can forgive her for tricking to fuse with her. But that doesn't work as the two end up getting trapped together, and like on the run, they need to talk it out. First, I have to mention Peridot. Up to this point, I wasn't all that keen on her, but here, she's absolutely hilarious because of the frustrations of just wanting to do her job, but these clods just keep getting in the way. But it's the scene with Pearl and Garnet that makes the episode. I think many can relate to this. We all feel like at some point that we need some assistance from others in order to feel some accomplishment. It also says something about Pearl's character and where she stands. We learn later on that Pearls are more or less the servant race, so it feels like while Pearl's her own being, she can't let go of the function she was designed for. Again, it's a message of self-confidence, but like in the test, it's handled really well and it doesn't feel the need to talk down to its audience. You are your own gem. You control your destiny. Not me, not Rose, not Steven. But you must choose to be strong so we can move forward, so I can trust you again. I understand. Number six. And it's stronger than you. Story for Steven and We Need to Talk. I feel the need these two have to be together. It's like they're one big story. Both of which are flashbacks to Greg's past and his relationship with Rose Quartz. Story for Steven is the basic how we met story while We Need to Talk shows how the relationship has developed from then on. These two episodes have everything fans have wanted. We wanted to see some Rose action, we wanted to see Greg when he was a solo band, we got to see the gems when they were younger, or in Amethyst's case when she was still a kid, and we got to see some jealous Pearl. You're just a phase. You know that, right? <sighs> no. I actually don't know that, Pearl. I so would like to have an episode where we explore the jealousy of Pearl because I still feel like she has some resentment in her. And trust me, resentment is going to be something coming back later on. If I were to choose my favourite out of the two, I would have to go with We Need to Talk. Mostly because we get to see how dedicated Greg is in wanting to maintain his relationship with the woman he loves. And yeah, I totally believe that these two love each other. Their chemistry is brilliant, especially at the end. And while Story for Stephen had two good songs, this one has one great song. I swear, I could listen to this all day non-stop. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Much like Fusion, you put these two together and you could get something amazing. I think this one's my favorite. I think he's her favorite too. Number five. And stronger than you. How the hell do you say this title? Thank you, Garnet. I can't explain why this episode is good. It gives little, but explains so much. Steven and the Gems are out on the ocean looking for Lapis and Jasper's fusion. You just bet the writers here were just like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, we totally didn't forget that there is a giant unstable fusion living at the bottom of the ocean. We were just building up to it. So while Garnet decides to find them alone, Steven, Amethyst and Pearl have a slumber party. That's the part that gives little, but the part that gives so much is how Steven is able to use his dreams to subconsciously connect with Lapis as we see the internal struggle she's going through to try and keep Jasper from gaining control. I'm not Lapis anymore. 
We're Malachite now. It also has some pretty disturbing imagery and moments that genuinely made me jump. <laughs> Lapis! Oh, and of course we get more hints of Pearl's feelings for Rose, but we'll get to that later. Overall, there's not much you can say except this episode does seem to give you more than what you were expecting. I'll show you how it's done. That's pretty convincing. Number four. And it's stronger than you. The answer. Ruby and Sapphire. <laughs> okay. Well, whatever. Ruby and Sapphire are just some of the most adorable characters ever. Not just because they're so small, but just because of how much they care about each other. How I'm really happy that the show was never afraid to show how far the affections go, and this is the episode that explains how they met. Much like with Alone Together, this episode has many different interpretations that you can take away from it. People have compared it to interracial relationships, heterosexual relationships, homosexual relationships, or really, just any form of prejudice. The visuals, again, are fascinating. I love the backgrounds. They're just so calm, especially the moments on Earth. The song is also really nice. It's so soothing and relaxed. It feels like something you would cheer for a waltz. Whether in a relationship or not, everyone can accept the answer to this episode. Love. Wow. Number three, and it's stronger than you. message received. Peridot has basically now become a member of the Crystal Gems, but in this episode, people were concerned whether she would resort back to her old ways. Well, thankfully, she didn't. After Steven notices Peridot taking a communicator from the moon base, he traps Peridot in the car and gives it to the Gems, only for Peridot to escape and take it back with the intention of contacting Yellow Diamond. This episode demonstrates what you could say is Steven's strength and weakness, his ability to see the best in things. He clearly wants Peridot to change her ways, but she tries to take advantage of it. What I like here is that for the first time we do get a sense of the type of planet the Gem Homeworld is, as it appears to be some kind of bureaucratic society. Oh, but it's an emergency! That's no excuse to use the Direct Diamond communication channel! Look, I'm sorry, but Miss Diamond is completely booked out until the next millennia. It also gives a hint of just how small the Crystal Gems are. Okay, not just in height, but as a force against their own kind. But what really sells this is Yellow Diamond. Good God is she intimidating! That calm voice? The fact that she doesn't look directly at Peridot when she's speaking, you can clearly tell this bitch means business. I'll inform your manager of your incompetence. In fact, now that I think about it, that voice does sound familiar. Oh my god, it's Broadway sensation Patty Lapone! The animation in this one is also pushed forward as the facial expressions are really exaggerated in some sections, which does make it even funnier. Well, since Peridot's short sightedness has pretty much doomed us now, we can all agree on one important lesson. You never piss off Patty Lapone. Number two and it's stronger than you. Rose's scabbard. While searching through the remains of a gem battlefield, Steven comes across his mother's scabbard, which results in Pearl again going fangirl over Rose to go in search of her missing sword, only to discover that Steven already knows most of Rose's secrets through Lion's help, which upsets Pearl. We've already seen some hints that Pearl might have seen Rose as something more than a great leader in the past, but here they don't sugarcoat it that she may have actually been in love with her. Her reaction to even the idea that Rose kept secrets from her is a prime example of this. You can't understand how I feel! None of you had what we had! She probably just wanted to protect you like everyone else! What do you know? You've never even met her! Also, this episode addresses the idea that Pearl might actually have some disdain for Steven's existence. I have this theory that the reason why Pearl acts like such an overprotective mother around Steven 
is because she avoided him completely as a baby because Rose gave up her physical form to give birth to him, so she hasn't had the chance to watch him properly grow up like, say, Garnet or Amethyst have. But some of that resentment still lingers in her. You don't need dialogue to tell you that that is a look that says it's your fault the person I love is gone. And yet, despite her saying such negative things about him, he still forgives her for what is probably one of the best animated sequences ever. You could have just ended it with the two of them together looking over the landscape, which again would be powerful, but they added that extra minute with no dialogue of just the two of them making their own memories. The music in this scene is easily my favourite piece of soundtrack from the show. It just makes the hairs stand up whenever I play it. With all these positives, you just have to wonder, what the hell could possibly top it? And the number one best episode of Steven Universe is... Lion 3 straight to video. Everything about this episode is perfect. The story is perfect. The characters are perfect. The humor is perfect. The emotions are perfect. The what I guess is the Lion Saga have always been a very interesting set of episodes as each one we get more hints that Lion might actually have some connection with Rose Quartz. Whether he belonged to her or if her spirit is somehow a part of him, there is always something that keeps him and Steven together. What happens in this episode is that Steven is able to go into Lion's Main, which is dimensionally transcendental, where apparently he finds an assortment of items that may have actually belonged to his mother. That's really the basic premise, but the way it all comes together at the end is just beautiful. I swear, I will bet anyone not to get the least bit emotional at the end. And yet, this is one of the most important episodes in the series because... Holy shit, the first official appearance of Rose. And everything from her design to her voice is pure beauty. That's really the definitive word for this episode. Beautiful. The speech that Rose makes for Steven at the end of the video is one of the best pieces of written material in the show. And it also shows some growth for Steven because finally he has some strong connection to his mother and let's face it, we all went to show our mothers our appreciations for them when Sadie picked up the phone at the end. This is where I feel the series began to evolve into what it is today, where all the focus will be on one narrative, more plot driven with an important episode right after another. So with all these elements, I can now say that Lion 3 Straight to Video really is the best episode of Steven Universe. Hey Rose! Take care of them, Steven. Like I said, this is all opinion based, so if I've left out an episode that you like, don't be afraid to post it down in the comments below and we'll start up a discussion on one of the best cartoons for this generation. Trust me, they're going to need something to look forward to after recent events. Well, this is Brony Dan saying, Nostar. What can I do? What can I do that no one